to introduce Janus Brachkatis here on stage here to talk about keywords spotting. By example, uh, Janus was a part of the Impact Project, who was a tremendous improvement for OCR, and it was also part of Transcriptorium. This is where Reads was uh, and Transcribe was, was conceived. So it's great to have you as one of the main experts in the field here. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Martin Bradkatis from the Moki University of Greece. Uh, from Greece. Uh, we are a member of uh, the Lead Consortium and uh, I'm going to talk to you about the hidden component because it's not uh, still integrated in the transcript. So, uh, the users, uh, which are well, too grateful that you're here and you get feedback on that. Unfortunately, for this component, you are, going, you are not going to have uh, a feedback currently because still this component is not uh, incorporated, it's not integrated. But I will give you some hints about uh, uh, the value of having such a tool. As the word implies, keyword spotting is uh, the action of uh, identifying uh, words, a document, or a collection when you query by a string. You have, you have this experience. So what I'm going to talk to you about is to uh, query by a word image, by taking uh, uh, an example of an image which uh, identifies the word, and I'm trying to retrieve similar places in the collection in a certain document which relates to this query. I will uh, in my talk there will be a trade-off between uh, technical description and uh, uh, the, the basic ideas uh, in order not to uh, I think that the, the vast technical details are not so important for, at this talk. So when we deal with this problem, we have to either segment a document into certain words, which is a difficult task, or not to segment it. So we have the segmentation based methodology and the segmentation free methodology. The one that I'm going to describe is segmentation free methodology which is going, which is going to support something which goes beyond the uh, typical keyword spotting since it retrieves, it can retrieve not only single words, but part of words, maybe complete phrases, and also graphical components, which sometimes like uh, logos, identify uh, the origin of the document. So the difference between segmentation methodologies and uh, segmentation free, segmentation based methodologies and segmentation free methodologies, uh, on the one hand, the segmentation based methodologies apply when we have simple layouts with uh, noise free documents. And uh, we have fast at times, but uh, we, when we have simple layouts, and it's not evident that uh, currently with the state of the art, that this can be used for big data, for big collections. Uh, this approach cannot handle degraded documents and uh, can detect only words, cannot go beyond what I mentioned before, beyond the word. On the other hand, <coughs> segmentation free methodologies, uh, when we have considerable degradation, this is the case that we have to apply in order to tackle the word spotting problem. It can deal with complex layouts since uh, it's a segmentation free approach. Uh, and as I mentioned before, it can uh, match uh, puzzle words, phrases, and, and symbols. And also, what I'm going to describe today is that uh, with uh, choosing particular structures for indexing, you can deal with the past memory and computational power requirements which uh, are needed for this particular approach. Again, additionally, I would like to mention that uh, for this approach, we don't need, need any training. We don't need to transcribe images. We, we don't need any user feedback, any user effort. As you are going to, to see, there is uh, an unsupervised training, but this does not require feedback. It's automatically applied and uh, it uh, does not require the user involvement. A general picture of the architecture which is used for the approach which is taken into consideration in, in the lead project is this one, 
The general architecture, com I would say that uh, comprises two stages, the offline stage, uh, during which we get the, the indexing part. So we take collections, the ones that we are going to query, and we index the information, which is mainly based on these two types of storages, uh, a memory storage, which uh, uh, permits to have a very, very fast access for big data, and uh, uh, another storage which uh, uses uh, hash structures in order also to facilitate this fast retrieval. The basic idea relates to using local information in order to model the different words. You see words which can be written in a different way, and we have certain key points, as we call it, which identify, identify similar uh, points in the same structure but written in a different way. So, we have two stages. One is the key point detection, and for this particular key point which is chosen, we compute a particular descriptor, as we, as we say, as we call it. So, the key point detection, not here you see the different stages, just visually to guide you, saying that we, this relies on the gradient uh, orientation, and which is quantized, and uh, on the connected components, which are related to the quantized levels, we define the different key points taking the gravity uh, for each connected component. For each key point, we use uh, different windows depending on uh, the scale. The scale, uh, we have an automatic scale selection based on the function which is optimized, and we build a certain vector with values which represent this particular region. The region around this key point is divided into 16 cells, like in the picture, and for each cell we have a particular vector which uh, represents the information inside the cell. What is important is to index this information, to make it uh, very fast, in particular, when you have very big data, which was a basic requirement in the read project, you need to have very efficient structures to do that. For this purpose, we have uh, uh, an approach which is based on a well-known principle in computer vision, which is called bubble words, for which you build a visual dictionary. A visual diction dictionary uh, you can imagine it as uh, a collection of, of particular words, visual words, which means uh, it's not related to the um, well-known words that uh, you have in mind, visual words, uh, which are unique for particular key points. Uh, we expect that a set of those particular words, particular visual words, can be connected and give us the words in question. That's why, in an offline uh, state, we produce clusters of uh, such similarities, which are the visual words, and having those clusters, for each new word, you see here, for a particular key point, we have rectangles, which are related to a particular cluster for a particular visual word. If we do that, we can use the hash function like the one that you see here. Each coefficient, which is called uh, B of W, with uh, the index uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, relates to the optimal word which is chosen for this particular rectangle. And in this way, we provide a particular ID for each word. And in that way, we have uh, this inverse byte structure, we have a particular ID for each word, and each descriptor is modeled with this type of information, x, y, which are the coordinates in the document, the doc ID, which exists in the collection that we have indexed, and the particular descriptor, which will be used to have similarities for the query process. Also, we have a special hash structure which is modeled with this special hash function in order to add our search 
not only for the center point in the world, we are going to understand in the sequel what uh, this does mean, but also in the context, in the special context. Therefore, imagine that we have a query image. For this query image, we take uh, the central key point. For this key point, we apply the quantization I described before, and we find out all the relevant key points in our collection. Such an example can be found, can be seen here. And for this, identify key points, we search in the neighborhood similar to the neighborhood as it is. For example, here you have a central point and the neighbor key points. So you, we have a special context. And this special context is created in the network which relate for similarity purposes to be compared with the context which uh, is raised out of these key points in order to find out the bounding boxes which uh, also relate to the particular words which exist in the collections. And in that way, I hope that is quite understood. I'm going to demo later on to give you examples how this works. We end up with uh, se the selected words out of the query word. So I repeat that really what is my query is a word image and I get the positions where this word image exists in the collection of on the collection of documents. So for this purpose we have also freely available the REST API which can be used in order to make the connection between someone who is going to uh, use a backend and the front end architecture in order to use this. And also there the is a demonstrator we plan to integrate in the Traskibus, but currently you can also use it, this is the address, but uh, don't do it uh, before <coughs> I'm, I'm going to do it and demonstrate to you. <laughs> we can it, make it also simultaneously, but uh, uh, this is not really a problem. Just to give you some ideas of uh, results to quantify the performance of this approach on uh, different data sets. With this number of queries, uh, the data sets appear like this type of handwriting to give uh, an idea of the type of documents that, uh, and the problems that we are going to address. And here we have, for the different collections, we have uh, the performance of this approach and also the query, that the time, that the uh, expense that is required for querying these data sets. The very important uh, thing in order to address big data sets is the fact that, uh, as you see here, uh, in the order of magnitude, we don't have a linear increase, which means that uh, we arrive at uh, addressing 50,000 documents with uh, just an increase of uh, 0 to 0.5 seconds. So in this way, I would like to change the mode in order to permit me to demo you. OK, here, here we are. By the way, here we have a collection from the Zurich Society. <coughs> Here you see some uh, examples. For example, uh, here, just to, to see, if you see here, we have a, a logo, which is a very unique logo. Okay? Uh, sometimes we may uh, want to retrieve all similar uh, documents from uh, having this particular logo, which means that uh, we have to, to select it and to get the similar logos, which is identified in other documents. But also sometimes we would like to address uh, queries which relate to partial phrases. For example, I would like to see which documents have, for example, uh, this part Okay, and we have a response and the relevant word. But also, um, in order to 
become more close to a spirit uh, which comes to historical, uh, more historical documents. For example, uh, I think here is a typical example. Uh, this is a protocol, and we'd like to retrieve all documents which are related to this because of the appearance of this word. Okay. We have selected the word, and we search, and then we get a response to similar documents which this word appears in this document. But also, another case, another use case, I think, which appeared as a challenge uh, during the literal because of the status. Uh, the library of uh, Passau uh, gave very uh, challenging, uh, um, let's say, uh, manuscripts. Uh, here we have uh, one table which is very interesting to index and to, to retrieve related information. For example, it would be very interesting if we identify thematic uh, information which relate to particular columns. For example, I would like to retrieve um, tables which uh, contain this particular uh, type of columns. Okay? And we see that we have retrieved different other tables, irrespectively of the intensity variation. You see here that clearly we have a different variation, uh, intensity variation profile, which is not easy to deal with. Okay? And there are many, many more ideas on heavy use cases because uh, with this tool it permits selecting the component, you can view the word as a component, the graphical component, which means that we have explicit uh, um, abbreviations, for example, retrieve abbreviations, uh, but you can uh, extend your imagination in order to retrieve information from the past collection of data. Thank you very much. Or queries. Is it possible to, because I, I don't know the right in here, or, uh, is it possible to upload my, I mean, like, everybody can can give his collection in it? Yes. It, because it's connected to, to, to transcripts, or it is no, not no, exactly? No, yeah, it's not yet connected to that. But there is uh, uh, the pipeline of uh, uploading a collection. So the collection would be indexed, and then you can query this collection. Would you get a better result if you pre-process the images to high contrast black and white? Um, we have not tried this out, but uh, currently mm -hmm. we don't see that this is a problem with processing. With the material that we have already tested. Maybe for another type of material it could be a good uh, states that uh, should be followed. That was incredibly impressive. Um, how you mentioned the use of symbols and marks, and you demonstrated the printout <coughs> of a symbol. How responsive is your system to variation in a particular mark? I'll give you a use case. A cross, which could be very formal, but it could also be distorted, or say an anchor, which could be displayed in different ways. So I'm interested in marks which have got semantic <coughs> consistency, but can show a lot of variety. The variety is um, related to different uh, transformations. Yes. Um, currently, this approach is not a uh, rotational invariant, but uh, can be used, can be done. Can we be should talk further. Yes. <laughs> this is not uh, a big problem. Thank you. Okay, we have time for one more question. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to know if you know what the algorithm is missing. Did you ever put it on a trial to see uh, what would be found intellectually? What algorithms are missing? What, yeah, what you get your question. The, the recall. I think she was asking about the recall. If you check the recall, uh, what we are losing. Ah, what we are losing? What is the kind of problem? You mean? Ah, it's great that you find something, 
But do you know what you do not find with the other? If there are any sources or yes. other words? So first of all, there are two things here, two requirements. Uh, a part of the accuracy is to access big data. Uh, and because of that, uh, we step back in the accuracy. Uh, if we forget the part of uh, accessing big data and we focus on accuracy, we think that we should work a bit more on the scale, the scale uh, component to be uh, to improve the scale uh, invariance. I think this is uh, this is the most prominent to deal with the problem when, but this is also a scale problem when we have a small the world created uh, in a very small scale and then we have a very very big uh, world. There we have to work uh, Thank you. Thanks a lot, and thanks again to you. Thank you. Next up is Alejandro Toselli from the Technical University in Valencia. He is in the team of Enrique Vidal, and he is one of the main experts regarding keyword spotting and indexing of keyword spotting. They have carried out already some different projects on keyword spotting and you will demonstrate that they uh, take it away from the technical side. I will talk about the indexing and searching of manuscript or big man, uh, large manuscript collections in carrying out and the real project. This approach is intended to make searchable, I mean one million word, one million page image, which is what the most drag uh, of the current keyword reporting system. Of course, we want to make this searchable in reasonable time. It's more or less the, the content of this talk. We talk about the, the, the motivation, then I will pick the talk a bit about the probability index. We carry out to make this approach. <coughs> then we talk a bit about the performance measures the preparatory step, some laboratory results, and finally some demonstrations. So everybody knows there is a massive text image collection which is available by archive, cultural institutions around the world, who most of this document labels on remind and transcribe. So it's impossible to make searchable this document. So the idea here is will have suitable accurate image transcript for such a document, we can this transcript to build index and make this, this collection searchable, of course. Also, everybody knows that manual or interactive transcription for such material could be an expensive and an affordable task. We need experts in the, in the topic and could read this kind of letter, etc. And also, since we are applying Full automatic transcription system. Of course, they are. If we use uh, automatic transcription to, to obtain some transcript or such material, it's no error free. So it's no useful for searchable purposes. The idea here is to make some kind of probabilistic index. Um, I will talk how we can build this such index. Here you can see an image, a piece of image. This is taken from Bentham Collection. We built this special probability map for the special for the world in this case matter. You can see here the peaks. The, there are four different peaks corresponding to each of the possible locations of the world matter in this image. And also, look here. This this is the world matters with S and T, which is different from the one matter. So. In, it is supposed here, so working correctly, the probability of, of matter here to, to appear here is very low. This is more or less the idea. How we can obtain this probabilistic map? This, uh, this probabilistic map is computed through, we can say, a sophisticated word classifier, which takes in account also the context around the, each of the world. So, for example, here the word matter is very low probability because it's next to it. For example, so taking account this, this we can decide that this matters and no, it's not possible to, to appear here if it matters. So we can use this probabilistic map to make search directly. 
But the problem of that is take a lot of time searching in this in this in this bidimensional map. And also we have the problem to store this map in the in the disk, which take a lot of space. Hmm? So one another in order to solve this problem directly, we compute from this probabilistic map some relevant probabilities for the world. We can use or directly build the probabilistic index like this one, for example. Here we have a piece of the, the, the same piece of the image, and here we can the index we build from this image. We have all the work here. This is the relevant probability that indicate that the work appear or not in the image with this value. And also we have the coordinate, the position of this work in the image. Look here, for example, the, the work for the work matters and matters. Matters here in this position appear with very high probability, practically 0 0.99. While matter in this case, in this position, in the same position, the same, but is very low probability. It should be in the same position. We we can also remark that in this index there are a lot of words that don't have any sense. For example, this word tau. So the idea here is we can we, we can we can index everything. We call this actually we don't call this word. We call set the words. This is a lexicon free uh, indexing tool which we don't apply, I mean, we don't apply any dictionary criteria, so we can, in this way, we can solve the problem of our vocabulary words. So it is, it is expected in this index appear all the words that likely appear in the image. So, how we can compute this probability index? As I commented before, we use a sophisticated word classifier. This is obtained with, from the convolutional <coughs> recurrent neural network. Of course, this network, as Kundra yesterday explained, is, is depart from text like image and produce some conf confident matrix. From this confident matrix, then, we apply some technique based on transducer to incorporate uh, language model which which are training from external corpus and then fr from this from this technology we obtain the final probabilistic maps. More or less this is a, the basic idea. This is more or less the workflow of the process of the cool process. We depart from raw image, we apply the keyboard spot indexing tool, we have explained before. Previously we obtain the corresponding indexes for each of the page. Then we obtain from these indices, we can extract some information um, to fill out the data set. And finally, keyword search, the user makes search using the image and the run image and the data set and can find the spot in, in the whole collection. Now, talking a bit about how we evaluate the system, we use the indexing, the precision recall trade off model in this case. Indexing and search quality can be accessed in this case by the precision recall. So, uh, every, not the, everybody know precision is high if most of the retrieved results are correct, while recall is high if most of the existing correct results are retrieved. Of course, if we use a perfect transcription, if we produce a perfect transcription, the recall precision will be in this point 100%. In the other hand, see we use an automatic transcription, which is no error free, we have some, some error, probably we will obtain, for example, this point uh, with lower precision and lower recall. But in contrast, using this probabilistic index, what we actually obtain is a different many points which form a curve, a recall precision curve which the user, is each of these points corresponding to some specific threshold that the user can set up in order to make the search. So, in this way, the, for example, the user can uh, decide to get more precision, go up, uh, increase the threshold, and obtain more, more correct sample, but probably 
we let recall. See if we can control the recall to get the maximum recall possible, decrease the threshold until, for example, we take, of course, again to have more phase as phase positive. So, in the process to obtain the to indexing the big collection we show later on, we use transcribo tool in this case for mining for three different tasks. First, line detection, all text line detection were extracted using the transcribo tool implemented by the Rostock, uh, using the engine implemented by Rostock. Then we use also, in order to obtain Malcolm on through to, to train the neural network, we use the page image text alignment. And also, of course, we use this to, to transcribe some page in order to, to have more training samples. These are the, the big collections we have indexing so far. The first one is the Chancery collection. It's about it's a collection from the 14th-15th century from the uh, National Archive of France. It's about uh, more than 70,000 pages. This collection. The other one is Benson. That uh, Louis will be talk after me. In this and the final, the last collection is the Golden Age of the Spanish Theater. It's at O. It's about, it's from the 15th, 16th century. It's about 50,000 pages, this manuscript. And these are the recall precision cues, the preparator, of course, we conduct this experiment in the, in the, in the very small subset of the collection because we don't have the ground through the, on the page. This is a train test for obtaining for the Chancery, Belsa, and TCO using the language model. This is the number of query set very work we tested in each of the collections. More or less, this is obtaining precision recall cures. This is the average precision. This means the area under the recall precision curve. It's more or less similar, similar to the previous. So, this is one of the chancery indexing search like demonstration. The first one is the chancery. This is, you can access and test it in these directions. As I said, there are um, more, uh, the number of indexing pages are around 76,000 pages. The number of spots in the index is about 266 million spots, the entries. And uh, this is something interesting using probabilistic index. We can, we can compute what is the, the likely number of running words in the, in the whole data set. In this case, it's about 44 million words. This is from the Bentham collection. It's a number of nine. In this case, this, this is the biggest collection so far. It's about 95,000 pages, from which only 89,000 pages were indexed because most of them are empty pages or printed text pages, which were well excluded from the data set. This is the number of exports, and the running word in this case, 25 million words. This is the last, the indexing of the golden age of Spanish theater, more or less 50,000 pages. The running word in this case is 5, five million word. We are we show you a bit demonstration. Everything is working. For example, you can look there was Austria. So the interface shows you all the, the box where where contain some of the page that appear the word Austria. For example, we can go inside one of them. Here appear two pages that have this, this, uh, this word. This bar shows which is the confidence find in, this, the, in the word find here. For example, we can look here. <coughs> Here we have the word Austria, and also what is interesting to see here, we can also click in every in every part of the of the image, and also we obtain, for example, here. In this case, we obtain, for example, a different alternative for for each of the of the word. As you know, there are um, lexicon-free system, and also give, for example, another possible alternative for the word is written in this area. This is a good uh, 
this can be a good tool in order to, to find out what exactly is written or to, to have some idea of what can be written in some area of the document. So also I want to show it's made possible also, it's made possible here to look at a combination of queries using Boolean expression, for example, or, or and, for example, and also you can directly search for directly strings if you enclose in square brackets. Also, we have another kind of demonstrator in a special. We are using one of them is directly we are indexing, for example, another kind of collection, no HDR, but for example, music manuscript. For example, this one from manuscript is in old piano codification. I don't know about music, but for example, open some of the book, some of the page. You can click each of the part and give what the the symbol, the music symbol, the score symbol, the one in each of the work. But the interesting thing here is you for this demo it's better to it's not have any sense to look at specific symbols. The really interesting thing here is to look for sequence of symbols. Okay, that's all. To upload the private collection and to make the index from um, because it is not connected with transcripts neither no 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 not for now I think we are planning to integrate this in the at the beginning of the next year maybe you need to say something about uh, how you do process the index and what your part is in, in the, that regard so you need to, in, in in this case, you usually do prepare the HDR and then you do some post processing. Maybe you need to briefly talk about this and what steps are to be taken there for a project to envision using your tool. Okay, now, as I commented before, the, we apply or more of them, of course, we apply the, the transcript, the, tra the, the tools available in transcription, in transcribus. About the uh, presentation, what started with the, the tool available in this transcribus, but then we apply some preprocessing. This preprocessing is text line preprocessing is about uh, some image preprocessing, correct slang, skew. I make some. I think I remember. I make some uh, apply some preprocess to clean the image. That's all. And then to train the neural network, of course, we apply some data augmentation in order to trends to, to train to learn with the possible distortions. Also, of course, we apply the recurrent neural network to re regularization method like dropout, etc. Other questions? Uh, so you said uh, that we also need um, the language model in order to process it. Yes. So how does the user or will the user build the language model or where will the model be built? Will it be built automatically or? Yes, I think to produce a language model can be can be carried out directly automatically. Usually it's, it can be built directly from the training sample, from the ground through. Or directly you can uh, you can use an, uh, an external port, port, port uh, an external data. Don't have any sense with it. Which actually, uh, an, an English corpus, for example, if you, if you are expected to recognize English sentences or in another language. Mm -hmm. There are two available for that. Uh, I have a question about uh, the training transcribe models you're using. Uh, for the three uh, uh, series you in names of Chancery Bentham and the Spanish, the one the Spanish theater. How yeah. many pages uh, did you need before you could uh, use uh, the keyword spotting tool? Key transcribers. Okay. Actually, for in the in actually, of course, you know, in Chancery, we only use is if I remember three three hundred page to train the models. In Bentham, we use 
800 page or less. In this year, TSO, we use here, in this case, we use uh, 286 pages, which in comparison with the, the remaining page, practically is nothing. Thanks a lot. Thanks again, Alejandro.